Okay, guys, let's take a look at our brand new, beautiful Ekahau Analyzer app. Ekahau Analyzer app converts your mobile device to a very powerful Wi-Fi or wireless scanning device that can be used to very quickly and reliably troubleshoot wireless networks on the spot, okay? It's extremely valuable tool to have. Before we continue, let's narrow down what our application focuses on. So currently, I am connected to Wi-Fi Ninjas Corp. That's my active association that my iPad is connected to. But I want to focus on Ekahau Analyzer SSID. Let me start typing it. This one here. I've configured this SSID specially for this webinar. So let's focus on that. And now you can see some green and red colors on the validate section of the application. And it simply validates against our specified requirements, showing us very quickly if we pass or fail those requirements. And these are set to basic connectivity, which means I want to have at least next 75 dBm primary signal, at least next 80 secondary signal strength, and then channel interference, for example, I want to allow maximum of three on 2.4, maximum of one on five and six gigahertz, you see what I mean. You can select any other pre-configured requirements like Echo best practices, or you can add your own if you want to. Okay, let's take a look at signal quality, switch to 2.4 gigahertz, and oopsie, it looks a little bit dodgy to me. Can you quickly spot what's wrong when it comes to channels allocation? It's 40 megahertz, so on channel 6, it overlaps with channels 1, 6, and 11. It creates a havoc, okay? If I had tons of active devices on it, that would be contributing to tons of retransmissions, collisions, and a slow perception of my Wi-Fi network on 2.4 gigahertz band for me and my neighbors. And you can dig deeper if you want to. Now we'll be looking at the access point that broadcasts our Ekahau Analyzer SSID. If I had more SSIDs configured, we would see them here. But it gives you a very good glance at the capabilities of the access point and how our sidekick sees it, okay? So RSSI, SNR, a channel and channel width, how many CCI, and what is the utilization? Actually, you can see that the utilization is fairly high on 2.4 gigahertz, like five, 10, Sometimes even more, like it gets to up to 20, 20%, 20 is because of I have five Wi-Fi cameras and around 60 Wi-Fi IoT devices associated on 2.4 across two of my APs. Okay, that's good to know. And then let's switch to five gigahertz. And uh oh, it's also quite wide. You can see that we have 80 megahertz channel configured on five gigahertz. In home environment, it might not be too bad, assuming you have good reception, because every time we bond more channels, we reduce SNR, as at least on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Uh, but also on Uni1, we can see here that we have some uh, neighbors trying to be smart. Some of them, they have 80 megahertz, probably with a primary channel on channel 36. And some of them, they have uh, APs, the, the radios configured on channel 44 or 48. And why is it bad? It's creating primary secondary OBSS issue that creates, again, lots of collisions and retransmissions, okay? Uh, let's switch to channel quality. It shows red, means that Echo Analyzer is not happy with something. Let's see what it's not happy with. Let's start with 2.4. On red, we see number of SSIDs, APs, jumping between five and six. It means that we have five or six CCI, cross-channel interference, channel contention, and that translates to quite a lot of devices potentially contending for the airtime, slowing it down for everyone. And utilization here is quite high now. So before, like one minute ago, it was 10%, whatever. Now it's 20, and it's still what I would expect to see in my network. On 5 gigahertz, it's also unhappy uh, with number of APs, overlapping APs. So we have CCI of two. We said in our requirements that we don't want to have more than one. Right, lower utilization as expected in corporate SSID, where it's just my devices doing genuine Wi Fi office things. Connectivity, it's grayed out. 
Why is it grayed out? It's because I am connected, my iPad is connected to the corporate network and I am validating Echo Analyzer network. And connectivity, it shows us the ping RTT latency from the survey device perspective. And I can't show you connectivity against Echo Analyzer because I am not associated to this particular SSID. Then interferers, all green, all beautiful. And that means that we have no interferers. And even if I switch to all bands to four and five, it says no interferers detected. Good stuff. Then if you want to peek into spectrum, you can. It's a very nice spectrum view. And you can change your coral scheme between traditional echo how, you know, green, green and, and red or uh, vanilla. It's not vanilla ice, it's Miami Vice <laughs> a color scheme. I like the, you know, pinky, violet color scheme because it's it's new and fresh and it looks great on, on dark. Uh, 2.4, it's quite busy. We can see some BLE advertisement channels here, here and there, uh, quite a lot of Wi-Fi traffic and also quite a lot of noise. And that will be all of my BLE, FRED and ZigBee devices in the home network. Okay, It might be a problem, it might not be a problem, depending on what do you, what do you expect from your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. 5 gigs is not as crazy. I have two APs and channels 44 and 100. Nothing too crazy there, very, very underutilized 5 gigahertz network, if you ask me. I would I would expect to see more. Uh, I guess my neighbors, they are stuck in 2.4 gigahertz era. 6 gigs, it's a little bit lonely here because it's just one AP on channel 5. We won't even see it because it just sits in a cupboard and sends beacons, nothing associated to it. Okay. And finally, this is like the biggest, biggest addition to, to Echo How Analyzer app in a while. This is my friend's big okay let me make it bigger <laughs> so what we are looking at is the information captured by not only not only spectrum analyzer but also everything else just not this column is captured by wi-fi cards inside echo house sidekick it parses beacons and probe responses to show us all this beautiful information available here and if this is not enough like the pretty much default columns configuration you can reconfigure your columns to have different fields like AP name, basic rates, BSSID, you know, everything that you see on the screen you can configure as a column and see at a glance from all the access points around you. Extremely powerful. We'll be diving a little bit deeper into why do I think it's that powerful. But now if you wanted to dive into one specific uh, network and see all the fields at the same time, you just hit the I button and now you see everything, okay? SSID, BSSID, vendor, AP name, basic rates configured, minimum rate, maximum rate, uh, current RSSI, uh, SNR, current channel, noise. It's, uh, it's, it's so nice to just see those statistics. Let's talk about why it's super nice to see those statistics and how to use it to our advantage. So first, I want to clear up this view a little bit. I will go to all networks, uh, drop down and select my network instead. I want to take a look at just Echo How Analyzer. That is the SSID that we are focusing on. And now let's start to troubleshoot using Echo How Analyzer, shall we? First thing that, that strikes me is I can see Echo How Analyzer listed twice. Why? It's because it's configured to work on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. And it's a bad idea typically to have same SSID across multiple bands because your devices, when they walk around, when you walk around with your devices around your offices, you will be roaming between these two bands, okay? And cross bands roaming is a slow roaming and you don't want that, right? Next, security. Dot one X. Dot one X, it means that we have enterprise grade security configured. And that means that my device will be talking through the access point to a radius server in the back end somewhere, maybe in a different country, maybe in a different continent. And it will be very slow, okay, to authenticate, at least initially, to our network. And that means that after the initial authentication association to my particular BSSID, my, my access point, I want to roam fast. I don't want to have to talk to my radio server in the backend every time I roam. So I would expect to see in amendments 802.11R, fast transition configured. 
but I don't see this little R letter here. It means it's not configured for this particular SSID, meaning that every time I roam, my device will have to go through full radius authentication every single time, and it will be super, super slow. By super slow, I mean anywhere between few hundred milliseconds to even few seconds. And that's not good for today's communications, voice and video and conferences. It will be really, really slow for your users. Another thing that strikes my attention is MFP, Management Frames Protection, or Protection of Management Frames. It's set to require it on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network. And the reality is, it would be great to have MFP or PMF enabled for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network because no one will be able to attack most of the management frames, like sending DAUF frames to drop all of your devices from a network with a single very easy and fast attack. But most of the devices, they will not be compatible with MFP configuration. They wouldn't be even able to associate with those networks on those two bands. And now 6 gigahertz, it mandates MFP. So if you see MFP on 6 gigs, it's fine. If you see MFP on 2.4 and 5, at least, uh, unless you know what you're doing, it's probably not fine. You will have compatibility issues. Next thing, minimum data rate. What is it? It's set to 1 on 2.4 and 6 on 5 gigahertz networks. This is the lowest available basic data rates on those two bands, meaning that pretty much all the management and control traffic will be exchanged at those minimum basic data rates. It will be very slow. Even though your clients and your APs will be able to do like, you know, on 40 megahertz channel, for example, like 573 megs on 802.11 AX with two spatial streams, most of the traffic, like, you know, the slow traffic management and control will be exchanged at these rates. So the data will be just taking a little tiny subset of the airtime from the entire transmission. Okay, amendments. So we've talked about 802.11R that is not enabled. The only amendment that is enabled is 802.11V. And would we want to use V? This is controversial. Personally, I wouldn't like to use V. So V, it gives infrastructure some control where infrastructure, your APs, can tell clients, Mr. Client, you are associated to this particular AP, but please, please join a different AP that might be better for you. And then a client has a decision. Oh, do I join it? Do I not join it? Most clients will just ignore it. And most infrastructures will kick the clients off the AP that the infrastructure doesn't want the client to sit in. And then the client won't like it. Some clients will even ban those particular wireless LANs. So they won't be able to connect back to them again if they were knocked off the network too many times. Then we see generation. It's Wi-Fi 6. Fine. Band 2.4 and 5. Fine. Now channels. Channel 6 at 40 on 2.4 gigahertz, not a good idea as discussed. 80 megahertz on 5 gigahertz in most environments, not a good idea. In corporate, it will create too much of a CCI. In home environments, it might lead to low SNR because every time we double channel width, we add 3 dBs to the noise and reduce SNR by 3 dBs. So we don't want to do it if we don't have a fully properly spotless coverage across the entire house. And then we have utilizations. The first column will be the physical channel utilization. Typically, it will be lower than the logical channel utilization. This is captured by Echo House Sidekick Spectrum Analyzer. And this is what's reported by the access point as part of the QBSS element of a beacon or probe, where access point says, actually, from my perspective, all things considered, physical, logical, uh, CCA, so clear channel assessment, I see network being busy 22% of a time, whereas physically network is being busy just you know 18 or 19% of a time. Okay, and that concludes this quick demo showing you how to quickly look at all this data to find what's wrong with the configuration of your network.